This disclaimer was copied without permission. Cheers, Quaffers, Cosmos, Wiggins, Sibus, and all other good people out there. Hops watch here. And uh, this is going to be a breakdown of a New Year's video that uh, the cult leader, the Danish cult leader who seeked asylum in the United States, Torben Sondergaard, put up on the 31st of December. So it's regarding what happened to him and the last reformation the past year. And it's also about his plans for the future. And while he tells about all that, he says some really weird stuff. Just not, not just weird the way very religious people say weird stuff, just really weird stuff, uh, no matter what kind of person would say them. And there may even be some hints in the video to why he says things like that, speaks like that. The question I want to raise with this video is he bonkers? Let's try and find out. But first, um, I'm uh, enjoying some leftovers uh, from Christmas. This is a traditional Danish Christmas white beer, but it's actually not white at all. It's very dark, as you will see in a second when I crack it open. It's from um, our local brewery here in Tistel, where I live. It's called Dane Julevit Öl. That's relatively safe to say, even on a sore throat, uh, even though it's Danish. So let's have a look into it. Um, one of the advantages with this beer is that uh, they're not very strong, uh, this type of beer. Uh, this one has 2%, which actually makes it one of the stronger ones. Um, the, other, the other ones that I tried this year, I think they had 1.7, uh, 1.8% 1 .7, respectively. some very nice and rich foam. A bit of sweet notes of uh, heavily sweeted coffee, heavily sweeted, uh, sugar sweeted coffee, I would say. And I hate sugar, sugar sweeted coffee. I, I have my my uh, coffee pitch black and <sighs> however when you find that taste in the beer I actually find it pleasant so there so let's get on with it shall we all right so it's about the first time that I try it in this program it's OBS I'll probably screw it up on the way but let's see how it goes Let's hear what he has to say. Hey everyone out there, happy new year to all of you. 2020 is a new year, it's a new beginning, and we are very, very excited for this year. Yeah, I hate the way that he says very. It's very, it's not very. I want to do a video here. It's a oh yeah, by the way, I hate the way he says video as well. Uh, it's, it's video. Video. It's not pronounced like in Danish, you. It's a little longer video, but I want to do a New Year's video where I want to talk about what ha happened for us in 2019, what I see God is doing, and what I believe we are going to see this new year, 2020. Yeah, I'm going to, to skip uh, a bit ahead here to the first time where he says something really, really strange. In Danish. And I have no idea that what we gone, went through could happen. I, I could imagine if you said in, in December, month of December, Tom, you're going to flee Denmark in one month and you're not going to come back and things are going to change and this and this and this. I have said, no way, no way, no way. They will not happen, but it happened. And God spoke to us about it, that the church are not ready when the persecution is coming. And God allowed us somehow to go through this persecution to help to prepare the church when it's going to happen. And it is going to happen. It's going to come to America. 
and I just see it, it is going to come <coughs> big time to America. And right now under Donald Trump, and you can think what you think, but Donald Trump has done amazing work for the kingdom. And yes, he's not perfect. And people say, but Donald Trump, come on, come on. God have used that guy. And yes, I, I look forward to sit down with him and share the full gospel. I look forward to baptize him in water and Holy Spirit. <coughs> this is why I'm in America. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, so actually Tobin is not in uh, in the United States because he 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 left Denmark um, because his his fraud was was revealed. He's in the United States in order to baptize Donald Trump and preach the gospel to him. Yeah, that's um, that's grand. Uh, yeah, yeah, you heard that right. You can rewind it and and listen to it again. You can also uh, uh, you can also hear him say it in the original video, which I of course link, linked in the description. Then the real battle also started <laughs> because I fasted January the 1st of January to the 26th of January. I did not eat. I fasted into I came to America and then I felt now I can eat again. But then yeah, he, he fasted into he came to America. Uh, again, he's, he's speaking this weird mixture of Danish and English. He tried to say he fasted until he, he came to America. Then in February, March, I felt God say, you have to fast and seek me more. So in Mar April, I fasted 40 days. Let's just, let's just hear that one more time, shall we? So in Mar April, I fasted 40 days. Yeah, but uh, I happen to have uh, the calendar from last year here with me. And uh, I've got the month of uh, April. The dates are actually numbered, so um, this 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 could be very very easy. But I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do this thoroughly, just to be absolutely sure. So let me see. That's one, two, three, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Yeah, I thought so. There are only thirty days in April, you dumb. F I feel I'm sick, I'm dying, what's happening? And in the end, that fear, that, that demonic attack started to manifest in my body and I couldn't breathe and I ended to a hospital with water beside my lungs and my rib and I couldn't breathe. And I was sitting at a hospital. Thinking... I understand that malnutrition can, can lead to demons. Now he's obviously fasting a lot. Uh, and for very long periods of time, well, he's not really fasting, as far as I can understand from rumors that I've heard. He drinks uh, one hell of a lot of cocoa when when he's fasting. I understand that uh, that malnutrition can can lead to edemas, and I guess fasting could do that as well. So don't take it from me; I'm not a pro medical professional. But uh, if any medical pro pro professional, a dietist, would know, I would really like to uh, to hear from you, and and know something about the consequences of, of fasting because uh, as far as I can see it when you're doing it it, it intensely and and uh, for long periods of time uh, it's it's one of those one more of those things that are harmful that religions teach us to do um, also I'm 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 seriously uh, asking myself whether the the weird things that he's saying and generally his weird antics could be a consequence of him having fasted too much and and taking some kind of I don't know uh, if not mental damage then then still if it's putting him off in some way I don't know uh, just random thoughts so what I'm going to no do now is I'm going to jump a bit so this is going to be about the persecution that he he also goes much on about and how the uh, the sacrifices that he had to make in in Denmark uh, are expected to pay him hundredfold back. Let's have a listen. And I sat there and said, God, you did not bring me to America for me to die. You brought me through all of this for me because you have a message for me to the people in America. And there in the hospital, God spoke to me. Mark 10. Jesus said, everyone who has left father, mother, brother, feels homes for my name's sake would get hundredfold. 
in this life together with persecution and eternal life. Yeah, there you have it. So persecution is, uh, for some Christians, especially fundamentalists, uh, they see persecution from people that are not Christian as a fundamental um, prerequisite for leading a Christian life. And this, a few days later, I saw the strongest healing I have ever seen with a woman who had uh, bones. Uh, the muscle was detached for the bones and muscle was destroyed. And Yeah. I don't think that's a proper diagnosis. Um, if that was, was a diagnosis made by a medical professional, they'd probably be asked to uh, see the leading physician uh, in his or her office rather quickly. God heal her and put everything together. And we have the x-ray, we have the testimony from the doctor, and we're going to come out with that testimony later this year. That's going to be interesting. Uh, I'll definitely be on lookout for that. However, I don't give much for for a for a testimony. I mean, people can make up what they uh, every sh kind of shit they want. I would want to see uh, X-ray documentation of the damage before, uh, or at least a, a medical journal of uh, the condition before the uh, alleged faith healing. And I want to see a medical journal after the purported healing, confirming that a healing actually took place. Also, I want to be absolutely sure that the, uh, that the condition that we are talking about, what, whatever its proper name is, is in fact permanent. If it's something that will regenerate over time, it could have healed for other reasons. It could have healed, well, simply by natural regeneration. So I'll be on the lookout for that alleged documentation. If he ever comes out with it, my money is on it being useless. Oh, what a fantastic frame I just, I just caught him in. So this is about um, experiences they had and how they came to the center and all that. I've never in my whole life experienced so many confirmations. I never in my whole life experienced so many times God had just sent the right person in the right moment. I never in my whole life experienced how God had provided for our needs the way he had the last month. And God had just provided. I just once says, a few weeks ago, God put in my heart about TV studio and we need equipment, we need cameras, we have nothing. The day after, the telephone call. Hey, Tom, what is your need? And it was a woman from Switzerland. I said, who are you? Do I know you? No, what is your need? How did you get this number? Because I was surprised you called. It was on a landline I never used. I did not know we had the landline. Ella, know what the number was. I never used it. Oh yeah, by the way, the word Ella, which he often uses, uh, that's the word or in, da in Danish. Uh, this or that. This Ella that is probably what he would say. But our friend had pl plugged it in and made it ready. And she Googled and found the address and found the telephone. And I'm like, how did you get this number? I was so surprised. She said, what is your need? I said, we need camera equipment. Okay, thank you. And the day after she sent $20,000 for equipment. So actually it wasn't because of God that that uh, person contacted him. Uh, it was because of Google. Fancy that. Uh, also, I, I think it's, 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 <sighs> almost nauseating that that this guy can can be so convincing to people that he defrauds them of uh, thousands of dollars of equipment that he persuades that he's able to persuade people to send equipment of that value to him i i i i don't understand um uh, but i guess people are gullible like that and when they are gullible, gullible like that i think it's it's disgusting that he is is exploiting that Look, another fine frame I, I caught him in. So the next thing he goes on about uh, is one of the core elements in the last Reformation cult, the courses. Uh, I made a video about the Kickstart course and, they, and he's telling about how they already made the first ones of those and the next ones that he is planning. And he also goes on about an experience that he had after he did the first pioneer training school. Those are the longer courses they take three weeks. He will explain that as he goes along. So let's just hear him out. I'm a little too good at finding these brilliant frames of him, aren't I? And we had just had the first school now. It's still there. We had a three weeks PTS that was continuing into a two month. 
the way we do school is three weeks is the basic training how to hear the voice of God, heal the sick, cast out demon, preach the gospel, and be led by the Holy Spirit, going out, find a person of peace, and so on. But we continue in the Luke 10, where we go deeper, where we talk about uh, more about the five-fold ministry, house network, how do we grow in all the things we have learned. And we had that three weeks, and it was beautiful. It was stronger than any school before. It was amazing, the testimonies. And when we end up those three weeks, and students have to go. 90% of all the students that didn't want to leave, they're like, no, we are changing our tickets, we are stopping our job, we are doing this, we are changing, we don't want to leave, we want to stay here, we want to keep learning with you. Not only is he taking uh, three weeks out of people's schedules, uh, using probably using up all or at least a very huge portion of the the vacation that people have have saved for themselves. Uh, not only that, he's uh, he's also uh, persuading people to give up their jobs. Sometimes even giving up their homes to uh, to to stay with him at his ark. I mean, come on, he's a it, it, it's a rip off from from Ken Ham. Uh, he can't even come up with his own stuff and 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 people are just suck, sucking it up and he's exploiting that he's ex exploiting that gullibility i i find it i find it despicable i find it really distasteful disgusting even we had our open house i'll just read it here we had our open house last weekend where people came people got healed people met god i just wrote on facebook over 50 people came one of them was this woman he, she came with this Another picture there. See God set free. See God heal. And a few days later, she shared a lot. Another picture where she was out for the first time in three years in a forest, walking around. The sun is shining without the neck bracelets, and she is free. And okay, so they have an open house uh, arrangement. Uh, the the weekend before, he claims. This woman attends, she has a neck brace and a few days later she, uh, she doesn't wear it anymore and she's allegedly healed. Now uh, that last picture doesn't look like a winter picture to me. Uh, she's, she's not wearing enough clothes to be out in the woods in, in the winter. I mean even, even with global warming that just doesn't look right. That looks like some pictures he, he found on the internet more than anything else. Just my opinion. Um, why would you wear practically no clothes just after you recovered from some serious neck injury? I, I think it's, it's, it's rather suspicious. Many, 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 many testimonies for last weekend. One wrote this on, on, on YouTube. She was here. Remember, last weekend, and this is a comment from someone who attended the open house arrangement last weekend. Here last weekend, she wrote this. I attended the open house at the Ark the 26th of December. The 26th of December was a Thursday. It was in the middle of a week. It was not in the weekend, you. What is it with this man and reading calendars? What is it about dates he doesn't understand? Oh. I was immediately met by my car, at my car of staff and students who welcomed me. Torben wasn't far behind adding his welcome. I shone around the campus, campus loved on, prayed for by several of the students and staff. I attended baptism where I saw broken people come on, on the water come up praising God, filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. I was also invited to break the bread communion with them. As a lifetime church attendees, I have never experienced such love towards me. This is called love bombing, by the way. It's a very common uh, practice amongst the destructive cults. Also, um, uh, the persecution complex is also part of something that is very typical for cults and that's uh, thought control. Uh, you should really check out uh, Telltale, um, his, all his videos where he uh, talks about the bite model.
And there's so much to unpack here in Torben's cult as well, where the Bible model w would be very, very applicable. Uh, you've got the love, love bombing here, you've got the persecution complex. The thing about the persecution complex is that it's a, it's a thought-stopping technique. It's a way for you to, to stop doubting. It's a way for you to stop considering whether the thing that you believe in may actually not be true. You've got someone who comes up to you, says that you're wrong and your religion is wrong. Uh, and instead of listening to these people and the, the arguments that they ha actually have against, against your religion, the re reasons for believing that your religion is wrong, uh, you will perceive that as, as them persecuting you. And that's a very effective way to, to stop yourself from da having doubts about your religion. I'm going to skip ahead a bit. He's going to go on about uh, which uh, other of these courses he's going to, to arrange uh, in the future. It's so strong and powerful what God is doing. And uh, we now at the school, we are taking the students to Florida in the end of February, in March, or in the end of January, in February. Yeah, or in the end of January, February. Uh, I'm going to uh, Texas, having a kickstart there, March. Yeah, so uh, the kickstart in uh, in Florida, that's uh, on the 20, just a sec, I want to, I want to do, do this kind of the reading correctly. The kickstart event uh, in Florida, that's in Fort Pierce and it's going to be on the 24th through 26th of January. And the kickstart in uh, Texas, uh, that will be in Austin on the 21st through 23rd of February. April we are doing the next school, May we are going to travel around in America still, we don't know yet where, and then June and July we are going to have the next school again. So things are happening and things are growing here and I am very, very excited about it. And I believe this is first the first of many centers. God has also put in our heart to start something in Charlotte. I think the new year, this year 2020, we'll, we'll do that we uh, will start a cafe in Charlotte and a TV studio and meetings there. So we had a headquarter in Charlotte and then we have the ark here one hour, 20 minutes out from Charlotte. So <coughs> Sorry, so that is our heart. That is our vision to have a big hub here, a center with cafe, TV studio, uh, equipment, uh, rooms and all studio. of that in Charlotte, have the training center out here. And then when this is up running, we are moving on to the next place to start the next center and the next center and the next center and the next center because I believe in Honda Fold. I believe what we are going through this year, God had birthed something inside of us and we are now seeing the fruit of it. It's still hard sometimes, but we have grown in our faith, in our, you know, we need to die sometimes. It's when we die, he can live through us. Yeah, that was pretty weird as well. Um, I don't know what, what death means to him. Uh, when we, we have to die sometimes and he will live through us. I, maybe he means uh, may, we will die sometime or where would, other people would say someday. Uh, but it, it actually sounds as, as if he, he thinks of dying as a metaphor for, for uh, experiencing a, a setback after which something better will come. And, and I think it works really, really bad as an analogy, if, he, if that is actually what he's saying. If he's, but so trying to steal man this, maybe he's just not very good at Englishing. Generally, he, he isn't. Uh, maybe he's just using a very, very shitty metaphor or he's really just talking crap again. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, so uh, the rest of the video, uh, just looking at my notes here, it's, it's really just more of the same. Uh, he talked about a new book that he's, he has uh, written. Uh, no, there's no reason to bore you with that. And he's waiting for his green card and, um, and he wants to start a new house church movement. So, so that is about, uh, so that is about the rest of it. So a little about his plans for 2020. So he has a huge expansion in mind and 
Anyone in the United States who lives near him, in North Carolina, near North Carolina, or any of the other places that he's mentioning where he's going, so Fort Pierce, Florida, uh, Austin, Texas, any group of secularists, any group of humanists, any group of just decent people, and not necessarily atheists. I mean, if you're a, if you're a religious person and you also, like other decent people, uh, think that, that what Tom is doing is wrong, I really encourage you to, to do something to, to make sure that his vision does not come true. We don't need any more Jesus census anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world. The one that we've got is not just enough, it's actually one too many, in, in my humble opinion. But back to the question that I asked at the beginning of the video. Do you think he's bonkers? Uh, personally, I, I wouldn't say that he is. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not uh, someone who, who is an authority on, on, on that in any way whatsoever. Uh, however, he does say some really weird things and, and I'm, I'm worried, not, not just because he's a religious fundamentalist, but if he's actually off somehow, if he's actually not, not all well, he can still be very, very dangerous. And actually the fact that he isn't 100% aware of what he's doing can even make him much more dangerous. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? Uh, is he bonkers? Is he absolutely normal? Is he for real? Or is it all just a mask that he wears? It's an interesting discussion and especially in his case, because personally, considering the, the belief as such, I think he's actually for real to a very, very high degree. I actually think that he believes that, that he's been well, touched by God, and that he does God's bidding in some in some way. Uh, but let me know in the comments as well. And if you like the video, uh, hit the thumbs up and uh, like and subscribe and all that. You know the drill from uh, from other videos that you've seen on YouTube, I guess. Uh, also, you'll find links to all my social media in uh, in the description, along with, as I said, of course, uh, a link to the video that I'm breaking down here. Nothing left to say then, always remember to drink responsibly and until next time. Yes. Cheers. Last year. But I'm still standing and I can testify God is faithful and we have now got the first of many, many, many Jesus senders. Am I the only one with Elton John going on in my head right now? I'm still standing. Sorry.